Right. What's up, YouTube? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. So this video is in response to my good friend on YouTube, Gaming Spies. Again, that's Gaming Spies. So in this video, it's going to be short and sweet. Um, it's going to be about, I guess, a little bit about composition, and it's also going to be about uh, backgrounds, like doing backgrounds. Now, I'm not going to actually do a background per se because I really don't have time to do it right this second. If I have time, I'll try to post another video, um, probably within the beginning of the next month. Um, you guys, see my channel? Please like and subscribe. I'll try to post more regularly and consistently. Right now, I've just been busy working on an animation test for a gaming company and um, doing some freelance artwork while I do that and hold down a day job. So, I've been super busy. So, let's get to the point. So, first, we're going to start out with different books. So I say the best thing to get good at uh, backgrounds, learning how to do backgrounds, is first just going out, looking at your surroundings, getting a camera, and just looking at the camera and looking at the horizon line. If you don't know what that is, just pick up a basic book on perspective and study photography and your favorite films. And I'd say one of the best things to do is just look at pictures that you take yourself and then look at different films and pause the film and look at the different shots that you like in the film and then study how like how they uh, how they have the layout of the film. And study like the horizon line. And when I say horizon line, say for instance, um, this book right here. This is just like one of my favorite animes. And so you can see some, one of the backgrounds I have here. You can see the perspective. I'm gonna read kind of best. So get that better view. Focus. And let's see what is that focus. See if we can get this in focus. So this is a shot from, from Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. And you can see here the perspective is going back. Right? So you see it's kind of a high angle shot. The horizon line is right there, as you can see going across. Focal points this way perspective. The horizon line is going across right here. So you can see it's a high angle shot because it's above her head. You can see the ceiling. Right? So that's what I mean by layout. And so you can see the background, even though it's kind of simple, it's still detailed. So that's one thing that you can study, okay? So, and then here's another shot in this book. All right. So that's, I believe that's Envy right there in the foreground. So this is a low angle shot. So you have Envy in the foreground. And then I forgot the officer's name, which is like the lieutenant or something like that to uh, Colonel Mustang, right? She's about to shoot her. So you have the leading lines right there, perspective, low angle, it's going back, right? And horizon line is right there. You can see the horizon line. That's what we would call the horizon line floor, okay? So that's one thing you guys can study. I know it's like really basic for some people, but for some that might not know, that's one thing to study. So like I said, just look at different um, film. The best thing to do is look at film and go out and study your life. Okay, that's the best thing to do. All right, so moving on. So that's so I'd say look at your favorite books like manga, comic books, and if they're really good at shots and layout perspective, you'll definitely get a deal of it. All right. So this book, if you're interested in it, this is the uh, the key animations of Full Metal Alchemist: The Brotherhood. And I think also has the uh, the old some stuff from the OVAs and the one before the Brotherhood. All right. So another book I definitely recommend, whether you're anime or comic books or film, is this book right here. This book is a must-have. This is a good book. Um, I learned a lot from this book when I was uh, studying, I guess. And um, this book is by Marcos Matteo Mestre. I think he's Italian. I'm not sure or something like that. But this book is really good. It's called Framed Ink. You can see the title right there: Drawing and Composition for Visual Storytellers. Okay, so in this book, he definitely talks about layout and giving backgrounds. And he also talks about like uh, lighting, talks about character design. So here's one shot right here, and he does like really simple illustrations using, I guess, Photoshop. I'm not sure what he used back then, because this book's kind of old actually, but it's still like, man, this is like a must have. It's really good. So you can see like the layout right here, and it starts out really simple stuff, and then he builds upon it, right? 
and you see the horizon line right there so like this shot right here is going across and then uh one thing i don't pay attention too much but one thing he talks about is like the rule of thirds i'll see if i can go to that see if i can find the rule of thirds so it's kind of like a grid thing so let me get to it for a demonstrate what i'm talking about so here so right here you can see it talks about the rule of thirds so you're gridding everything out right so you can see has this person right here where the place that this person in the foreground this person in the background so of course they're going to appear smaller right and so rule of thirds kind of breaks stuff up you don't always want to have stuff in the middle you have stuff plays different points you have stuff like offset you hear a lot of storyboard artists talk about offset like maybe a low angle shot or like maybe a tilted shot where instead of having this book like this it's kind of tilted like that within the frame and that creates a little bit of tension but it also creates interest and so another thing one thing about when you're creating backgrounds and composition is like direction like where is stuff going okay so like you can see here zooming in there's references to zoom in so first is establishing shot so what you call establishing shot with this house and then right here this zooms into that window creates interest okay so that's one thing to think about background and, you know talks about camera angles and stuff like that I mean, it talks about different perspectives in this shot right here. So as you can see, zoom in. So it's like a wide angle lens, so different types of lens, angle shots called five point perspective if you want to get technical. Then you call it like a long shot, which would be like a long lens. All right, then a close, a close up. Now that doesn't have much to do with the background, but you can see here right there. Some more focus on the background there so this is a really good book really good book definitely recommend it for anybody trying to get in the field especially if you want to do storyboarding here's another shot like an upshot so or not upshot low angle shot you can tell see like midday because you can see the sunlight up on there so it's either dawn or the sun setting because you can see the light right there all the leading lines go up, you can just tell the direction is going up, so it's a low angle shot because you're looking from down below. And the same thing here with this shot right here. So you got the trees in the background. And there's another shot right here, another interesting shot right there. Just got the light in the background, this guy's being interrogated. You can tell it maybe in like some bar or like kind of shut in house or something like that. Okay. So there's that book, Framed Ink, by Marcos Mateu Mestre. And I believe the publisher is who's the publisher? Design Studio. So they have some really good books for beginner, intermediate, and advanced. Just if you want to just like brush up on your skills, okay? So that's one book I definitely recommend. And another one, Design that's by Design Studio. See, there's a publisher right here, but um that's by Design Studio. Is uh how to draw drawing and sketching objects and environments from your imagination this is by scott robertson with thomas burton scott robertson is like a household name when it comes to design this guy man he's he's pretty amazing i mean some of the stuff he does not really up my alley because you know i'm more into anime and animation but if you're looking to learn how to do like props and different vehicles and just really interested in this kind of stuff which i am this is definitely a book to have. So let's get to the background stuff. All right, so let's see. Perspective. Try to keep the book in angle. So we're gonna go to perspective, let's see. So perspective terminology, so chapter two. So here you can see on this page right here, he has like camera angles and stuff where in relation to everything like that. It gets really technical, I think, a little too technical depending what you're trying to do but I definitely say if you get the book just read straight through it don't like skip around uh, this is just something you want to focus on so here you can see it talks about like cone of vision like your eyes how your eyes relate to stuff here and then it talks about like scale in relation to stuff and how you, how you see stuff cone of vision stuff like that so that's one step thing to consider in this book it's pretty technical here. So like I said, it's really technical, but nonetheless, it's really good. 
So if we don't want to focus on that chapter per se, he has examples, and some of these examples are from actually from some of his students that start off in the school. I forgot what school he taught at, but some of these examples are from his students. Wait. Oui. Okay, I have to find it. Hold on. All right, and so here you can see how he has like different examples, like study from life. He says use pictures from life to study that type of stuff and how they relate and background scale. So you can see he has a, a scale going across one point perspective. Well, actually, this is two point perspective. So you can see how scales going that way and then that way, leading lines. I want to see the scale, Papa. Papa, I want to see the scale. You guys gotta excuse my son, he's awake. So here's a, here's another nice picture. Look at that shot right there. Okay, so like five point perspective, like the fish eye lens. You can see the background, everything's going to one point perspective, going in the back. But at the same time, you see how it's curved up the front. Like it's fish like eye a toy. It's a car. So this book's really good. Um, and let's get to one more other chapter. I don't want to take up too much time going over books. Let's see, uh, where is it at? So you can see some of the stuff that the students did and then they, they draw it out and then they render it. So you can see here is the drawing and then here's like a 3D rendering of it. So that's the drawing and here's a 3D render. So we'll go to one more chapter that's really useful when it comes to environments. So let's see. Found it. All right. So here he talks about thumbnail sketching. Okay. So before we do that one. All right. So here we go. So yeah, chapter seven, drawing environments. So he has a complete breakdown. And if any guys, you know, like a lot of stuff just starts off about thumbnail. Whether you're a designer, comic book artist, anything like that, a lot of stuff starts off about thumbnail. Thumbnailing. Because if you thumbnail, you can like keep it simple, and then after you thumbnail, you can take that thumbnail, and then you can enlarge it, and you can build off of it and go to more complex stuff. So that's the best I say for especially doing like comic book and layout stuff. Thumbnailing is really good, quick and fast, and you can get more complex with it. So you see how he has the thumbnails. It talks about how you start from the thumbnail. You see, this is another picture I think that one of the students did, I believe. So you can see the layout, the buildings. It's kind of like a like a, a big long establishing shot, big field of view, and you can tell you're between buildings and then looking out into an open area. And it's kind of glowing because you can see up the different buildings up top and stuff like that. Really amazing. I wish I could do stuff like that. It took me a long time to do something like that. And stuff like that in a while. And so it goes into housing, just like architecture. And then he talks more about thumbnailing and blocking and stuff like that. That's a little more technical, so we'll move on from that. But yes, this book right here, definitely a book if you want to get technical and really focus on backgrounds. See, you can tell how he uses different angles and perspectives for backgrounds and stuff like that. So, another book to have how to draw if you can afford it. I think it's maybe like 20, 30 bucks online, Amazon, maybe now. I'm not sure. Okay, so those are books I recommend and some of the things that you can do. So now, let's we'll switch. All right. Okay. So I chose this photo right here. I know it's not the most interesting, or at least maybe not for ladies, but I'm not sure probably for you guys. The reason why I chose this photo is because I'm pretty sure it's like just a stock photo, there's no licensing or anything like that. Just to have to not worry about copyright or anything like that. Okay. So like I said, I'm not gonna do an actual drawing myself. As you can tell I'm pretty busy. But one thing I want to break down is as we go along. So as you can see here, we have the horizon line right here. And I'll indicate that with the line. So this is the horizon line, okay? 
straight line across. So that's the rising line. Okay. And then as you can tell, since we can see from below her body here and everything like that, this is a low angle shot. Because we can see from up from there. Right? So this would be a low angle shot. Because you'll be able to look up and see her. That's her body. Okay, I know where to stop it. Okay. So this is a low angle shot. We have the buildings here. So one thing to consider when doing a background is you want to consider how you want whatever. So the object of interest. So this would be the person or the object of interest. Is this this chick right here standing up in the foreground? You want to see how and how she relates to the background and where do you want her to stand out? Where you want to be big or stand out in front of the camera? Or where you want to be small, make her appear small, small like an establishing shot? So you want to think about how you want the character to, or the object of interest to relate to the environment that they're in. So in this picture, she's not too far away, so maybe the person that took the shot, you want her to stand out and seem really important against the city, like it's her against the world, as opposed to being really small and she's coming up from out of nowhere. Okay? So even though the buildings, like right here, are big and up close, Still, you can see her. And as you can see, everything is going down to one point of perspective. One point of perspective. See, you can see all the leading lines. Right? See all the leading lines. Going to like a one point perspective. I say probably maybe at this point right there. Everything is going to a one point of perspective. So that's the only thing we keep in backgrounds. We're doing backgrounds. And also, this is kind of at a tilt. So if we had to do a three-point perspective, the lead lines would probably be like this, something like that, and we'll have something up here, okay? So that's one thing you want to keep in mind when designing the background. So let's just play around and do something else. Okay, so with the buildings done, as you can see, I know it's really sloppy. We can just block this out real quick. So this is the foreground. I'll just screw this in. Make sure that's the ground. And it's her standing up. Alright, this will be our building. We have more buildings. Some big. We'll block this in. From perspective, so one thing to keep in mind is how everything leads back to that. And this is really sloppy, y'all. Here, so even with the windows, we go to our perspective. And then once you get this down and studying photos, you see this would be straight because this is flat in front of. So see how these lines lead to the building, even with the windows. All this would go to the vanishing point. Is what we call that. And then the windows will be straight. And the reason why these lines are straight with the windows is because it's, it's flat. It's head on. And the same thing with these windows. There you go here. So that. Everything's just like leading lines. And there. Eventually level up. Back to our referencing point. And guys, I know this is really sloppy, so it's not going to be perfect. And then because this is kind of at a tilt, these lines will be a little different. Okay. So that's one thing to keep in mind when doing the background. It's how you want the object of reference. So this is our object of inference, interest, I mean, interest, excuse me. How you want them to relate to the environment that they're in. Okay. So we'll do one more. We'll do one more pick. 
that. So let's do one more just from scratch. All right, guys. So let's see. Sorry, this one's going to be kind of sloppy. I apologize. So we're going to do kind of a somewhat of a low angle. We're not really looking up at something like three-point perspective. So this is going to be more of a one-point perspective thing. Very simple. And then here, as you can see, I have like a little semicircle. So this semicircle is going to represent the clouds and the, the direction they're going. So they're going to be kind of like a circular motion. So if you ever seen like pictures or uh, or ever seen like manga where they draw like the clouds going in circular motion, like maybe a storm or something happening. So we're going to have that. And then this mountain here is going to be coming from the foreground, okay? So it's going to be below the horizon line and then also above it because it's coming from the foreground on the left. All right? And again, I apologize. It's really sloppy. We're doing this kind of fast. I'm actually filming this while watching my son, so you guys bear with me. Okay? So some of the stuff I know is really elementary and basic, but, you know, for some of you out there, maybe that's what you need. Maybe you just need a reminder. Okay, so as we draw this mountain on the right, I'm going to put some buildings that are built inside on the side of the mountain itself. All right, and so as the buildings get up, of course, as they go higher and higher, of course, it's going to be further away from the ground, so they're going to appear smaller, right? So if you study anything in real life, just look outside. If you study, study film, film study film, you see as they pan and have different things in perspective, as stuff gets further away, it gets smaller, right? If stuff's closer in view, it's bigger. So, you know, and like I said, I know it's really simple stuff that's really easy that you know about, but some people just might need a reminder, some people just might be there, they just might be starting. And so as you can see, the bottom of this mountain part or mountain range, I'm drawing it on right on the horizon line. And the reason why it's being drawn on the horizon line is because it's further in the distance. Okay, so that means the bottom of it is gonna be on the horizon line or on top of it to give the, to convey that it's further away so that's another thing to keep in mind very basic very fundamental though okay so simple little things like that as you start to progress and get more detailed and get different perspectives and stuff like that in your backgrounds that'll help you so as you guys watch this video keep that in mind and just think about what you want to draw before you draw it. Go out and just go look at stuff. Look at movies. So thank you guys for watching as um, as I continue to post stuff. I'm going to try to post um, two things. I'm every other Sunday, twice a month. So I'm going to be working on my own personal project, storyboarding for animation. And then I'll just be working on animation skills and stuff. So... As you guys watch, you know, hope you like and subscribe, and maybe you'll find something interesting that as I animate, you'll be learning along with me. So this is going to be a journey as I animate. So I'm going to try to post on a consistent basis twice a month. And the animation type of stuff that I like is uh, stuff similar to Yutaka Nakamura, Hiroyuki Mashi, uh, the creator or, uh, if I remember correctly, director of animation on classics like... Um, Fooly Cooly, or you know, and plus he's a co founder of uh, Trigger Studios, worked on Kill la Kill, uh, some of the Lupin movies, just his style, man. Some of the stuff he created, or, or Dead Leaves, man. Some of the fight scenes in that movie is just like really quirky, really funny, you know what I mean? The animation's not so straightforward to his work, complete like real life. He just really knows how to take stuff to another level and just be like really free and creative with it. And that's the beauty of animation, you know, you can do anything you can think of as long as you can, if you can think about it, you can put it on paper and you can convey it. That's one thing that's really awesome about art and animation. If you can think, you can put it on paper. So as you can see, these buildings are further in the back. So of course, they're going to look smaller to convey scale and proportion. So remember, whenever you're drawing something, your object of interest you always want to draw that last. That should be your last thing that you draw. You always draw your background first, and then you draw your object of interest, whether it be a character, a bike, anything like that. Because whenever you draw the background first, it's easier to take just this one or two elements, or even a prop, and then scale it to the proportion you want it to be within your background. 
Because imagine, if you drew your character first and you place it somewhere on a page, and then you have to go and draw all these different elements of your background and make it fit to the right scale and proportion that you want to be to this one character. So say, for instance, we draw a character first, and then you want the character to appear small. So when you draw the background, you got to draw the, all these different elements to the background. Say, for instance, buildings and mountains. You got to you gotta go and draw all those things and make them just the right size, which can take time. Because you might have to erase and go back. And if it's a really detailed building, you have to draw that detailed building all the way over. Whereas if you draw your background first, have it just the right size you want to be, it's easy to just take one element, this one object of interest, and make it the right size. And if it's not the right size, you can easily erase it or adjust it to where you can make it the right size instead of having to do a lot of work. So always keep that in mind when designing and drawing a background. Always do your background first, then put your object of interest. Another thing to keep in mind when designing and drawing backgrounds is what type of background do you want it to be and what do you want it to convey? Do you want it to be something of like just, you know, really wit or something scary or maybe like an obstacle course like in Kill I Kill when they had the obstacle course for the school? Or do you want it to be something homey like a certain fielding, feel? Uh, and, then, and then of course you get more into like cinematography stuff like the lighting, which direction is the lighting coming from? What time of day? Uh, what type of mood do you want it to be? Do you want it to be like a somber mood where it's like a funeral or like kind of new or like it's kind of sad or dark or kind of mysterious like where shadows and harsh lighting, like harsh contrast. So I always keep that in mind when designing your background. And then of course that's when color would come into play. You know, your different colors convey different moods. And then that's on that's on the whole other subject itself. But those are just some things to keep in mind when designing your background as well. Especially if it's gonna be in color or if it's gonna be for a film. Um, hope this video is really helpful to you guys. And I just wanna say thank you for the few subscribers and people that are watching. Thank you for watching. Uh, I'm glad it's helpful to you. Sorry, like I said, I've been posting consistently, but I'm gonna to try to post or well, I will post. Uh, twice a month probably it'll be the first Sunday of each month and then the last Sunday of each month or if not it'll be every other Sunday so here I'm gonna draw a little man and as you can see the guy he's walking into the screen so he'll be walking into the screen he's holding himself like a little satchel maybe he's traveling or he left the town so as you can see the guy, he's going to be in the foreground, so he's going to appear a bit bigger than the buildings that are further away, going into the background, going to the vanishing point. And then another thing to keep in mind that I forgot to mention when designing backgrounds, if you can, like, have, like, different, uh, different aspects, like, different views, like, maybe a camera tilt where the, the background or the... The picture itself is kind of like a tilt out of perspective, like they call it offset, you know, it's kind of thrown off. This creates tension, it's very dynamic, it's not flat and just bare bones right there in the middle. It kind of creates interest. So we'll put the sun in the background, you know, just something really simple. I know it's kind of elementary, almost like something like an elementary kid would draw, you know, that not like super talented or anything like that. But you get, you get the message, you get what I'm doing. All right. And again, thank you guys for watching. I um, hope this video was helpful. If you find it helpful, please like and subscribe. Leave comments at the bottom. I'll leave uh, the names of the books at the bottom. So if you're, more, if you're interested in buying them, please go pick them up because they're very helpful to me. Even though this picture might not show it, I promise they're very helpful to me and I've done some awesome stuff. You can check out my personal work at justinwilliamart.com. Again, that's Justin. William, W-I-L-L-I-A-M, art.com. Um, you can also check me out on Instagram at drawn to justin Again, that's D-R-A-W-N, drawn, the number two, Justin, on Instagram. And right now I'm working as a freelance artist. I'm doing some storyboarding for some live-action films that are going to be pitched to some executive producers, either in Hollywood or any studio that can pick them up and, and get them going for a... Uh, for a small time movie producer his name is Lord Lyles he's doing some nice uh, positive work live action films he also has a film right now in the works that they've been filming and working on called Through the Fire um, that film itself is about it's a historical fiction it's about a young man that's in the Nazi army and he's coming to grips with himself and humanity um, just the horror of what he's been a part of as being in the Nazi army and so he decides to get out of it and that's all I can say. I, won't, I can't give anything else away. 
But uh, definitely keep an eye out for that if you're into live action films and like, you know, films that have a positive message and really get you thinking. Definitely worth looking at. Other than that, I'm just like a lot of the people getting my foot in the door. Um, I was also doing some animation tests for a mobile gaming company, but I can't disclose any more than that. Um, Flash. So again, if you guys like this video, leave comments at the bottom of the section, in the comment section. And again, I'll leave the names of the books down there so you can check them out and all my information. Um, as I'm finishing, watch, as I'm finishing drawing this up, uh, I got, you can see like I have like legs in the foreground. So even though this might be like a little out of proportion, this would be to where the guy is walking into the camera, right? So the, the camera be at the bottom of his feet, he'd be walking to the camera. And in here, after he gets further away into the distance, his body starts to come into view. And so that's the thing that helps you with perspective, right? So again, thank you guys for watching. Enjoy the video. And that's it.